Okay, so in this video we're going to add weapons. This will help us look at the two ways we can take key inputs ourselves from the player. And as well as that we're going to look at ray casting, which is the main method for collision detection in Ursina. Just a warning, as we are switching to having more entities within our scene, I'm going to start using a more object oriented approach with classes. If you don't feel as confident with that, I'd recommend teaching yourself it first, although I will try to explain things a bit as we go. Before we can get into that, first we need to import everything we need, including the first person controller, and set up our scene and give ourselves a ground entity. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this now as we've done it plenty before, but you can always pause and slow the code down if you need a refresher. One thing I am going to mention though, is how important it is to give our ground a collider, otherwise the player, which we're about to deal with, will just fall straight through. To create our player, instead of calling the first person controller straight away, we're going to create our own player class. Within the brackets, we can tell it to inherit everything from a standard entity in Ursina. We could tell it to inherit the first person controller here, however that would cause issues when we create our own input and update functions, which will overwrite the existing functions the first person controller uses. Instead, what we are going to do is create a separate player controller entity, then when we initiate our player, we will set its parent to the controller so it remains fixed to it. In case you're wondering, the two underscores either side of init means this is our initialising function that runs when an object is created. And in addition to that, by using the two asterisks, then kw args, we are basically telling it to accept all keyword arguments we pass our object and then just pass them on to the player controller. Super.init is just how we initialise the entity that we are inheriting everything from. Now within the controller, there will be other entities we can access, such as the entity that the camera pivots around, or the diamond at the centre of the screen. These are pretty easy to find from the controller source code, so I'd really recommend looking through there at some point and understanding how everything works and I'll put a link to the GitHub page for this in the description. We can create some weapon entities now, and parent them to the camera pivot that I just mentioned, to make sure they move with us as we look around. The positions and so on here will vary depending on the models that you decide to use. We can then create a list containing all our weapons so we can access them later, making sure to use self dot at the start, to make sure it's accessible by all other functions within the class. From there, we just create a variable storing the index of the current weapon we have out. Then we can create a function which iterates through our weapons and only makes the selected one visible, using the visible attribute that every entity will have. If we wanted to, enabled is another attribute we can use here too which would also stop these entities running any scripts and it would turn off any colliders if they had them in the first place. Now we have that set up, we can get on to taking input from the user. The first way we can do this is with the input function. The only extra parameter we need is the key parameter, which tells us what key event has just happened. All the standard inputs are as expected, However, for the more interesting ones, they are listed on the cheat sheet, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Now we can just use that key value to work out what to do, such as switching to the weapon selected if a number key is placed, then catching the exception if it's not a number key to just move on. We can then use the scroll up and scroll down events to switch weapon number then throw in a modulo operation just to make it wrap around. If we want to continuously check a key being held down, say within our update function, 
the built-in held keys dictionary is really useful. Just pass it the key you want to check and it'll either return 1 or 0, which you can then use in a true or false check or as part of a calculation like I'm doing here in order to move the player camera up and down to let them crouch. Finally, let's just call that player class within the main body of our code and if we test it, you should see everything working as intended. In order to look at ray casting, let's make our gunfire bullets. We can create a separate bullet class in the same way and give it some attributes like speed and lifetime. We can also just store the time it was created so we can destroy it if it has been moving for too long. When we ray cast, we are effectively shooting a ray out which will then return a hit info object if it collides with an entity. There are two main arguments we need to pass, the origin position of our ray and the vector direction that the ray needs to go. We then have some optional arguments. We've got the distance, which decides how far the ray can travel. If we only want to target certain entities, we can pass a list of them to the traverse target argument. If there are entities we want to ignore, we can pass those to the ignore argument and then moving on to the hit info object that we will get back it will have the following attributes there's the hit attribute which will be true or false if something is hit with the ray or not the entity attribute will return the entity object that the ray collided with the point attribute will give the point relative to the entity whereas the world point will give the point of collision relative to the scene. And then we've got distance, which is just pretty obvious. There's the normal and world normal, which will give the vector that is 90 degrees to the face which is collided with. And then finally we have hits and entities, which just return lists, which are useful if lots of entities are hit with the ray. As always, I will put links to each part of the cheat sheet for this in the description. We can use this to cast a ray one step ahead of where the bullet is travelling, and then if the ray doesn't collide with anything, and the bullet doesn't get timed out, we can move the bullet forwards. If this isn't the case, we will want to destroy the bullet using the destroy command, and then passing it self. Then we can just add some code taking the left mouse button as key input and we can check if we have the handgun out. If so, we call our bullet class and position it at our camera's position. Testing this out now, it should all be working fine. However, there are ways to improve it, such as altering the starting position of the bullet so it appears to come more from the gun. Or maybe you could add um, mag sizes and then make the player reload. You could also maybe uh, create your own enemies which get destroyed when shot by the player. But um, that's it for today. Thank you for watching and as always please like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.